Hello, my name is Gabriel from Gabank USA. In this video, I'll teach you how to clone a hard drive. First of all, in all my videos, what I try to do is to give a little of theory, and then we are going to see some practice. And then I'll teach you the rest, so you can do the, the job. First of all, we are, what I'm going to use is Acronis. Acronis is a good software to clone the hard drive and there are another alternatives like Clonezilla. Clonezilla is open source and you can use it for free. I'll leave the URL or the links in the description below if you want to see them, so don't worry about that. First of all, I'll teach you some things that you have to keep in mind before doing the job. First of all, you have to know how big is the hard drive that you are going to clone. In this case, we are going to clone 120 gigabytes and it's fine for the shop is and it is fine for the people i mean they need just a little bit more uh, space right now but it has been working for years no problem at all before than that i was cloning this same computer because it had a mechanical hard drive if you had a mechanical hard drive and you're going to clone it for a solid drive it would be great the computer will work much faster usually the mechanical hard drive has around 80 megabytes a second against a solid drive that it will be around 500 so the amount of the speed or the speed is huge so if you want to know about that maybe you have an old computer and that computer takes like two or three minutes to boot up with a solid drive it will boot up in 15 seconds so it's huge so another thing that you have to keep in mind is this before buying the, the drive like i said before take a note or write it down in somewhere how much space do you have uh, free and how much uh, space you are occupying in the hard drive so that way you will know how big it has to be the, the hard drive so let's say in this case we have it 120 and you are going to put a 240 like is in this case no problem always when it's bigger you won't have any problem but sometimes when the customer will bring me a computer and the hard drive is 500 megabytes because it's a mechanical drive and the person doesn't want to spend maybe that much in a solid drive what you can do is okay say okay if you have all the program the windows office and everything else maybe the total size of all those programs is 100 gigabytes you can put maybe 120 you would be it might be very tight in, in that moment but if you want to go a little bit farther you can use 240 that would be ideal but most of the people use word excel and they use it for browsing so 120 would be more than in, enough usually windows and the package uh, office package it will be around 50 gigs let's say that you have a windows 7 or windows 8 and the, the package the office package of 2013 so if you have that usually it's around that amount of gigabytes so with 120 will be enough so if you have like i said a bigger hard drive and you want to put a smaller one what you can do is try to ask to the customer say hey uh, what do you do you need to copy in the smaller hard drive and then the person will say well you if you don't copy all my movies and all my music will be a fine I'll say okay you do that and maybe you can reduce the data size for 50 gigs or 70 gigs and then you can do the trick with 120 will be enough but <clears throat> if the customer wants to keep the information what you can do is just buy a, like external uh, enclosure just a usb uh, enclosure and then you can put the old hard drive over there and you can put the new one inside of, of the computer so now i'm going to show you the computer that we are going to, to use to do the cloning the drive and, and everything and i'll show you another one just in case if you have a different model we are going to be cloning this uh, computer. We are going to take it apart and I'll show you how everything works. In this case, it's HP. The model is ProBook 4530. 
So in this case, the way you do the, the job is very easy. You pull these things together and then you remove the battery. And after that, you pull it together again and you remove the whole thing as you can see here. In another times, you may have a computer like this. This is a Dell. And in this case, it's different. I'll show you here. You will have the this tray here, and you will have two screws. You remove the screws, and it's easy. In this case, I removed them already, so you can see. In this case, you remove the hard drive. It's pretty easy. Um, that, that's it. I mean, you have one screw on one side, or the other screw on the other side, and you you can put the, the other one. So it's, it's that quick. In the other case, I'll show you just in a close-up so you can see it better. And we are going to replace a hard drive like this. It's a SATA, it's a solid drive. And we are going to use this kind of uh, adapter. So that way we can clone it, no, no problem. What you have to keep in mind is this. If you have the notebook here, here with this adapter is cool because it's, it has the power and it's the data all together. You don't have to use another transformer. So here you put the, the drive and you can clone. You have to boot up with this DVD. If you don't know how to boot up, usually pressing F2 or F10 or delete, depending of the, of the brand, is, it might be different, but you can enter it into the setup and then tell to the machine how to boot up. So that is pretty quick. If you don't know how to do it, just let me know in the comment and I'll send you a link with another video showing you how to do this. But that is pretty easy. If you want to do the same with a computer, it's fine. Usually it's delete. If you don't know how to do it, go to Google, uh, put the name of your computer, the name and the brand, and the model and everything you, you have and then uh, type how to enter in, in the BIOS. Um, that's it, that's pretty. So let's dive in in the practice so you can know how it's done the, the shop. We're going to clone the hard drive that we see here. First of all, we need an original copy of Acronis. I bought it online, so we are going to put it on the DVD. And after that, we are going to see the hard drive. As you can see here, we are going to make one click, right click, and then properties, and then we are going to see the space. Here we are going to use 84 gigabytes, so we are going to do the same in the other partition, and as we see here, we have a gig. So, with less than 100 gigabytes we're going to be okay so in this case we are going to use this hard drive to make the copy so to clone the hard drive that we have so we are going to have more space and then we are going to use this adapter as you can see here is 3.0 because it's blue and we are going to connect it here and after that we just connect it to the usb and that's it now we are going to restore the computer and boot up with the CD and that's it. So with that, I'll show you how to clone the hard drive to make the computer very fast. In this case, we have 120 gigabyte Kingston, um, but we are going to upgrade it to for 240 gigabytes. So we are going to boot it up with this CD or DVD that we just put on the DVD ROM. Now we are going to choose this option. We are going to wait until it boot apps. Okay, great. Now that it has boot up, we are going to choose here tool utilities, and then we are going to go here, clone this. We can leave it in automatic. Click on next. We are going to choose what is the um, source in this case like i said we have a kingston we are going to choose that is the source and uh, this is the destination so we are going to select it uh, like it says here select the target so we click next it says that 
it will destroy everything basically so I have been using this drive to make some tests so we are going to click on OK it says before after so it will look like that uh, we are going to proceed so it will start with the process and in 30 minutes or an hour I don't think so it is going to take that long we will have everything ready so we can choose here if we want it to restart the computer when it finish or shut it down so we are going to choose here shut it down just make sure that you have the computer if you're using a notebook that it has the power the charger or if you are using a desktop try to use a UPS and as a battery backup in case there is a um, shortage of electricity or blackout or whatever so we're coming back in a little bit it says in seven minutes it should be ready Okay, here we have the notebook. So in this case, this kind of notebook is very easy to take apart. In this case, we have to push here, we remove the battery, and then we have to push it again, and then we remove this part so we have access to the hard drive as you can see here. In another notebook, you may have like a two screws here. Once you have removed all those, screws the one that are here and then you have a tray here that you can pull it here there are another one that maybe you have to remove the whole thing and you may have different screws everywhere but in this case it's very easy it's just straightforward so we are going to remove the screws that we see that we see here so i'll show you with any screwdriver we can do this it's very easy no problem in this case i'm using a victorinox swift knife with detachable tips so in this case it doesn't matter you can take whatever you want to make it work for you so here we have one screw we have the other one now we have to remove all those screws that we have here sometimes they have just screws here and other ones or another times it has a screw here and here and sometimes it's just one screw in the middle now we have to push this way if it is a little harder sometimes just pulling from here to this side you can do it otherwise you can do a little pressure here with a screwdriver in this case with a flat driver I can as, a, as you can see here we have removed it and now we have to put the other one it should be like it should go like that but like I said we have to remove it from here so it will stay in one place uh, won't be any any problem so let's see what we are going to do in this case we have these little screws that we have to and tight okay, now we can remove the drive like that now we have to put the other one Okay, now that we have the hard drive here, as you can see, so it's 240 gigabytes. So we're going to have twice as before, twice as much as before. So we're going to put the hard drive where it goes. Just remember that you have to fit on the connector that we see here. Remember the hard drive has this connector, the big one is for the power, the little one is for the data. And now what we can do, if 
it's a little bit too hard we can push it with a flat head so it will fit fine once we have it there so we have to put the screws like it was before Okay, once we have everything in place, we can put everything like it was before. Like I say, if you have a little tray, just put the tray back as it was with the hard drive. Then put the screws. In this case, we have a place to put more memory. If you want to do that, that would be great. And in this case, we have upgraded already. Now we have to put the battery and done. Okay, now we turn it on and let's see if it works. We're going to remove the hard drive, the DVD. Remember that I told you that we had the DVD here, so now it should boot just fine like it, it was before. Now we are going to check the space. As you can see, we have plenty space, more space than before, and that's it, that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, click on like. If you didn't like, dislike it. Subscribe to my channel to know all the new videos that I will be uploading. And remember that I have a Facebook page and I have a group in Facebook also. The group is just to ask questions and the fan page is just to follow me and to be updated with all the videos that I will be uploading. Also, you can follow me on Periscope or Meerkat. So see you to the next time. And remember to share this video with your friends and tip on YouTube if you want to donate a few dollars, one dollar, five or whatever you want is okay so see you to the next time bye